Do you think stocks are going to go up or down following Fed Jerome Powell and the summary of economic projections, which comes out on Wednesday? Well, screw your opinion because Tom Lee has his own. Fundstrat says May CPI and June FOMC, both Wednesday of this week, likely viewed positively by equities. Equities are positive five days later, five out of the last six FOMC meetings. The main event is this Wednesday with both CPI and FOMC. Overall, a very important macro week for stocks. We remain constructive on stocks in June. I guess that's putting it lightly since Tom Lee expects a 4% rally in the month of June. And let's be honest, I think there's a pretty good chance stocks are going to go higher after our major events this Wednesday. We did just have the Bank of Canada and the ECB that cut rates for the first time in many years, this whole rate hike cycle so far. And what tends to happen is major central banks tend to move at the same time. So I think there is a little bit more pressure on Jerome Powell to start cutting rates sooner rather than later. But more importantly, it's the reason why the Fed is cutting rates. If the reason why the Fed is reducing interest rates is because the economy is weakening and we're going into a recession, well, that tends to lead to a sell-off in the S&P 500 of about 23%. If the reason for the Fed cutting rates is because inflation is falling and the economy is still doing okay, which doesn't tend to historically happen, that in practice should be good for stocks. The question really is, does the Fed start to cut rates before it's too late? And I think the markets are going to get a lot more information on just that coming Wednesday. And let's be honest, although the jobs report last Friday came in much better than expected, you did have 650 plus thousand full-time jobs that were lost last month. So under the surface, that jobs report was not nearly as good as what it looked like. And really, I think whether or not Jerome Powell is bullish or bearish, dovish or hawkish coming on Wednesday and potentially even signal the first cut could come July 31st, in my opinion, we'll have to wait and see, really comes down to CPI and well, CPI comes out the same day as the Fed, and the Fed pretty much has CPI, likely right now. The Fed has made it very clear before that they get CPI reports and non-farm payroll reports a couple days before the markets do. The summary of economic projections is going to be by far the most important part of Wednesday at all. The summary of economic projections is by far going to be the most important really event for many months because you will get projections from the Fed for GDP, for unemployment, PCE, and the Fed funds rate. Now, the last summary of economic projections that we got, the Fed was still expecting three rate cuts. Now, markets, they're not expecting three rate cuts, but it is possible the Fed could signal at least two maybe three cuts because you have seen some weakening out in the economy and major central banks have started to cut rates. But I don't think you necessarily need to get three cuts for stocks to do well. Two cuts or even one cut could be good news as long as it's not accompanied by economic weakness. And in the last summary of economic projections that we got on March 20th, of 2024, the unemployment rate was expected to hit a peak in 2024, according to the Fed, of about 4%. We're already at 4% today. Does the Fed expect the unemployment rate to go higher or not? I think that is a very important piece of the puzzle as well. And I think it's also important to remember that March 20th, you had three CPI reports back to back that showed inflation reaccelerating again. If CPI comes in lower than expected on Wednesday, that is going to be two CPI reports in a row that are now declining again, which is another reason why I would say Wednesday could actually be a positive day for equities. And judging off of the outperformance in the Russell 2000's ETF IWM, well, I think the markets are 
warming up to that idea. IWM today is up 0.45%. Also see Nvidia is up about a half of 1% today, which is actually impressive considering most of the time when you have these stock splits, you actually tend to see a sell-off after the split itself. But if the Fed is bullish on Wednesday and CPI comes in good, then you may actually see a little bit more selling in big tech with stocks like Nvidia because those guys really don't benefit from the Fed cutting rates or a soft landing. If if anything, those companies actually lose out when the Fed starts to lower rates because they bring in less interest from their cash. And also worth mentioning, small caps have sold off quite a bit heading into major data and events coming this week. From top to bottom, small caps have sold off 5% ever since about mid-May, roughly one month ago. So could small caps be set up for a rally here? I think so. And the Fed signaling that maybe they're going to cut rates sooner than the markets expect, which current market expectations are anywhere from September to December on any given day you're looking at, they, they're they changing, then that could bring more money, that $6 trillion in money market funds, back into stocks and most likely into areas like small caps that are more dependent on rates. I actually think that could end the flight to safety in Nvidia. Here on the day today, the percent of stocks above their 50 day moving average is pretty much flat. About 42% of stocks are currently above their 50 day moving average. And even though broader markets have hit all time highs in recent days and weeks, you've actually seen the average stock decline since mid-May. Back in mid-May, about 63% of stocks were above their 50-day moving average, and today it's at 42%. That's not exactly a raging bull market. This has been a very specific bull market for specifically your big tech names. And if we want to get more specific, a raging bull market for NVIDIA. And trust me, I'm one of the biggest bulls on AI. Don't get me wrong, but when you can walk down the road or street or town, a busy mall, whatever it is, and ask people, what is Apple? And they say, hey, got that right here. I got, you know, the, the AirPods right here. And then you ask them what's in video and they look at you like you just spoke a foreign language maybe we've run too far. Maybe this transition into AI and the world turning into something similar to the Jetsons is going to take a little bit more time. And maybe Nvidia is not the only place you can invest your money. But don't get it wrong, 50 years from now, yeah, it's the world's probably going to look like the Jetsons. CNN's fear and greed indicator is neutral today at 45. One week ago, it was fearful at 44. So you're basically between fear and neutral right now. 10-year treasury yields are up four basis points today, and that kind of highlights the jittery feeling that investors have heading into Wednesday. And furthermore, fueling some of the jitters, you can see the VIX is up 3.5%, which if you're unfamiliar, the VIX is a tool used to monitor the puts and call ratio on the S&P 500. So if you see the VIX is up, that means there's more puts being bought than calls. If that if the VIX is down, that means there's more calls being bought than puts. That's the simplest way to put it. So it would appear like some people are kind of fearful heading into Wednesday. Your latest AI investor sentiment survey showed bullish investors at 39.0%, bearish investors at 29.0%, and bearish investors at 32.0%. And this is the highest level of bears we have seen in many months. If we go ahead and take a look at option activity within the S&P 500 today, you can see 25 distinct and notable trades worth $3.6 million and a positive order value of 39%. So there's definitely some hedging heading into Wednesday. Now, total calls for this for this Friday, we'll go ahead to this one. Total calls, the open interest is only 20%. The open interest on the put side is 80% and being a contrarian, if everyone 
four fifths of investors are negative on the S&P heading into Friday, you probably get a positive result. And take a listen to what Ryan Dietrich said on CNBC today. Look uh, at the markets. Showing us now at the opening bell, Ryan Dietrich, chief market strategist uh, at Carson Group. After a great year last year, people thought maybe a, a re- reversion to the mean this year. So far, so good um, for 2024. More to come in the second half, Ryan. Yeah, Joe, good morning. Thank you. And go Cincinnati Reds. As hot as the Reds are, the market's just as hot, Joe. Um, you think about it. Listen, May is usually not that great. And we just had a really good May. What I think people need to know, Joe, is that could be a signal, right? When you gain more than 4% in May on the s like we just did, June is higher eight of the last 10 times. But more importantly, the rest of the year is up over 10% on average. It's doubled the at any time returns. That's just one signal. I get it. But, Joe, we're still seeing clues. I've been with you guys for a long time now. So this is a bull market. We're not changing our tune. We still think second half of this year is going to be pretty darn good. The, um, the S&P next year is expected, in your view, to earn what, Ryan? Yeah, well, this year they're expected to gain 11% right now. We think it could gain about a percent or two more. And even in, then you go into 2025, then, I mean, gee, you know, it's expected to be low, a low uh, double digits there. We think, again, a surprise can be can happen. I mean, we, people keep doubting this market. But, again, what have we seen, right? I mean, just last week, last week, Joe, on a pretty good upside, what happened? Put-to-call ratios go higher. Some of those sentiment polls became a little more skeptical. I mean, that kindling is still there overall for a summer rally. One more point. These three months we're in right now, June, July, August, in an election year, or last I checked, we are right now, usually pretty strong. So we think a summer rally still makes a lot of sense, Joe. You, you'd prefer earnings continue to rise or you could uh, prefer a, a little bit of – softness that allows the fed to cut which, which or you'd like both yeah wouldn't we like both i mean you think about it though we're seeing that right i mean we're seeing the softness just last week you look at the isms right the isms like manufacturing and services both prices paid came down unit labor cost prices came down so we're seeing some positives and then again the underlying pinnings of this uh this strong bull market and this economy we're seeing we don't see any major cracks other cracks of course there are some cracks but overall earnings are strong inflation is coming back we think the first cut will likely be in september and one more in november from the fed there are people that say this is still um the breath has not expanded enough and and you you think that the the soldiers come to meet the generals you're not worried that it's been this market's been propped up by the nvidia's and the magnificent sevens of the world uh, that is a great point. And just two weeks ago, across the board, we were hitting new all-time highs or 52-week highs in various advanced decline lines. So, yes, believe me, we'd like small caps and mid caps to participate more. But we think that's the case. We think that's probably going to happen. I know other guests have pointed this out, but you look at PE multiples, small caps relative to large caps are as cheap as they've been since the late 90s. They had a 13-year outperformance. That means it's going to start right now, but we do think small and mid caps probably do pretty well in the second half of this year as things do um, overall expand. All right, uh, Ryan, we've got uh, less than a minute left. We appreciate it. We're going to take a, a quick look around the, uh, the markets before we go. Uh, Ryan, thanks. So. And again, I will point out the outperformance of small caps today is definitely encouraging heading into Wednesday. We also have three companies that will report earnings that'll be impactful. You have Oracle, Broadcom, and Adobe. They could specifically be important for the AI trade. So let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comments section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you made it to the end of this video. Odds are, hopefully, you learn something and you will continue to learn things if you watch all of these videos. Most importantly though, enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.